Gospel of September the 7th, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew that they were to think what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another how they might, what they might do to Jesus. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're just going to concentrate again on this beautiful gospel. Many times we don't we don't really go deeper and deeper as I intend to do. The scene is another Saturday, another Sabbath. It's a Saturday, the day of the Lord, according to, to Moses, to the Torah, to the law. And the Lord has entered the synagogue, the place where they should worship God. And he finds there, because God willed it that way, a man with a withered hand. And not just any hand, but his right hand. Now, if you use more your left hand, you will see your right as, as good, but not as important. But most of us are right-handed. So if our right hand was to be withered, that is, was to be somehow paralyzed, that we cannot use it, just imagine 2,000 years ago, when there, was, there were no cars, there were no elevators, there were no, no stoves, there were, there were no gas for your electric stoves and, st and things. Everything had to be done manually. And the man was the one to provide for all those things, for most of the things in the house. And he would have to work. And having a withered right hand meant that he could no longer sustain himself nor his family. And that was a terrible situation for him. Could the Lord wait for the next day? Yes, certainly he could. But what, why wait and slow down the goodness that you can do to someone, especially going against the will of God? The scribes and the Pharisees hated the Lord. The scribes that we could compare today as those theologians that know the entire scripture back and forth 20,000 times, but that have no faith. For faith is not certainly a knowledge. Faith is represented better by the relationship of a woman with her husband. And the woman would be each of us, and her husband would be God. Faith is a very deep relationship of confidence, of trust, of dependence, not just a thought. The Pharisees would, we would find among those of us that are so well dressed that even carry around crosses and big ones on, the, on, on our breasts, that we would like to think that are pure, segregated, even between the religious people, even between those ordained bishops, priests, deacons, those who think themselves pure and reject the others. They hate Jesus because they have an entirely different agenda on their minds. 
they want to profit from the synagogue. They want to make good money on it. They want to be regarded as above, as masters. They want to be called masters and rabbis, just as the Lord had told, had told his disciples not to be called. But they want that. They also want to have the power that the synagogue can give. And the Lord asked them. First, he asked the man with the withered hand to stand right in the middle of the place. Many times we can delude ourselves, make ourselves full, false, because if we're walking down the street and we perceive that down there on that same sidewalk is a beggar or someone that has a dire need, sometimes we'd rather cross the street so that we don't have to encounter him. Sometimes we would just turn our head so that we don't have to see someone that we don't like. So that we would not feel the suffering of the other. And why not? Wouldn't it be at least good enough to feel the pain of the other that we could pray to our Father for him? But the Lord puts the man in, with the withered hand in the middle. And then he asks them and you and me. Is it lawful to do good or harm on Sabbath, to save life or destroy it? The scribes and the Pharisees forget, forgotten forget, the first commandment, of which derives the second one. Thou shall love your love, thou shall love your God with all your conscience, with all your life and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And why the second one? It derives precisely from the first one, because if I love the Father, my Father, which happens to be your Father, if not for your sake, for my Father's sake, I would love you just as I would love myself. If I truly love Him with all my conscience, with all my life and all my strength. Now, listen carefully to this. The law prohibited work, manual work. But it did not prohibit to speak. The Lord never touched the ill man. He just told him a word. Stretch out your hand. And then was healed. And that was enough for them. That they were trying to find a way to accuse him. Those words were enough for them to be furious. Because again they were exposed. Do we feel exposed today? Let us strive rather to work with the Lord. Do not try to put even liturgy before the love of the person. I am not asking you or inducing anyone to become disorderly, neither in the liturgy or anything else. But what I am saying is, just as the Lord tells us, if you are br bringing me something into my altar and then you remember that your brother needs something, go and fix the problem with your brother and then come back. Because first and foremost, and better than in the altar, we will find God in our lesser brother. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.